Good day, dear viewers, and welcome to today's episode of Visit. I received a request from moved or concerned parents. The daughter is 16 years old and was admitted directly into hospital after a bicycle crash. There was a strong suspicion of a concussion. The daughter stayed in the hospital because a concussion requires a three-day stay with control and observation. Of course, such trauma from a fall can cause bleeding and a haemorrhage in the brain. Creates, of course, sometimes as a seeping haemorrhage and change to pressure conditions. And in the context of this observation, this young girl then stayed in the hospital. You can't get up then. You really have to lie down. An MRI was done. Although the signs didn't develop in any dramatic way, but to double check, you do that. And they did an MRI with a contrast medium. The young girl, no bleeding has been confirmed, then came back home. A few days later, discomfort arose. So the parents now urgently bring it into connection with this contrast medium examination. There are always headaches, like a brain fog, so you can't think clearly. There are various pains that change in the body, especially dull pains as described by the parents on the hands and on the feet. The young girl suffers from nausea again and again and sleep disorders. Now it makes me investigate the question can there be a connection with a contrast agent examination? And we're talking about gadolinium here. I did a little more research, of course, and it's not the first time we've encountered this issue, that's a fact. This element, gadolinium, was discovered in 1880 by Charles Marignac. At that time, he was investigating the components of samoskite. This is a very rare mineral from the mineral class of oxides and hydroxides. And he examined this mineral for its corresponding potassium sulfate solubility. And after this solubility precipitation, reactions were formed, multiple fractions, and one was interesting in the absorbance spectrum. And then on April the 19th, 1886, six years later, this unknown element was named gadolinium, abbreviation GD, in honour of the Finnish chemist Johann Gadolin. That means since then, we also use this con contrast medium with all its toxic consequences. And it's also noted by the manufacturer and there are warnings in the relevant statements so people who go to an MRI scan but also have to undergo magnetic resonance have always felt fairly safe in the past but the knowledge of the high toxicity has actually been known for many years. Gadolinium as a contrast agent in magnetic resonance imaging is one thing. 
but at the same time, because it is, of course, also known in terms of toxicity, a chelate binder is added. This chelate binder is the DTPA, so that it is actually very quickly bound again and excreted through the kidneys. But gadolinium is needed for many other things. For example, the production of green fluorescent tubes, but it's also used in X-ray technology, or, for example, in the use of microwaves. The list is long. The annual estimates of the use of gadolinium in the context of nuclear medicine is 2 to 4 billion doses of gadolinium-based contrast media per year worldwide. The toxicity is measured by the integration area, namely, the gadolinium can be built into the liver as well as into the bone system and then stay there for years. The free gadolinium can then act as a calcium antagonist and can affect the contractility, so the muscular tension of the my myocardium. This results in a myocardial muscular weakness. And the other thing is that it inhibits the clotting system. I would like to enumerate it here so honestly, speaking of the toxicity, because it has to be possible for us as consumers to know what is happening to us. And not every MRI scan is vital. But nowadays, it is very quickly included in a diagnostic procedure and is set as the method of choice. And sometimes these things may not be necessary, which is why it is important to me that you should simply know about these things as well. Because as a patient, one often does not read these things or is not confronted with these things at all. Whenever gadolinium is injected as an IV injection, it is acutely toxic again and again. And of course, the smooth and striated muscles are affected. But also the mitochondrial function, the mitochondria are our energy power plants and blood coagulation and toxicity are rated as fairly high. These are the facts, first of all. The extent of its toxicity has been known for more than 10 years. And it has been observed that the nephrogenic systemic fibrosis, so high quality kidney tissue, then transformed into fibrosis. And whenever it turns into fibrosis, these are connective tissue cells and no longer highly clinically effective cells that regulate metabolism and detoxification but are replaced by connective tissue cells and as you know for example with the liver if the liver steers into a fatty liver then the proportion of available fat cells for the liver is diminished the gadolinium is also a known toxic liver poison and especially in the case of previously damaged kidneys. And what is always also questioned is in the case of a contrast medium injection, the doctor must be sure that you have a healthy kidney metabolism. There are seven contrast media, especially for magnetic resonance tonography which we now know that can cause a disease like this. Nephrogenic systemic fibrosis in patients with very weak kidneys. A weak kidney in terms of excretion includes, of course, in advance, that the kidneys have been under strain for many, many years. And if today, 
you base a contraindication to the administration of gadolinium solely on this, and it's actually forensically certain that one questions whether a kidney disease is present, then I have to tell you that we see that the liver, in its high task for the detoxification of the body, and within the framework of its liver detox phase 1 and phase 2, it has to store toxic load due to lack of kidney excretion or a toxin that is not 100% prepared by the liver of course also remains in the kidneys. This means the integrity of an optimal liver detoxification is crucial here. And I also think that if we say today also with a liver disease, and this has already been enforced by the manufacturer, a particularly questionable contrast medium is not permitted. This contrast medium is also not permitted in liver diagnostics. Then that has already indirectly achieved, in my opinion, a high level of mindfulness in nuclear medicine. And yet, within the framework of all other nuclear medicine investigations, it is limited to kidney health. So, medically, we are always very quick to see not only a kidney dysfunction, but kidney disease, on the one hand, but also these many functional weaknesses that people develop in the course of life can then be the cause as part of such a contrast agent examination to break the camel's back. And of course, and then for example, the USA have approved Optimark, Bayer's Magnavist, Omniscan, and Multihance Biodiagnostics. These are four contrast media, for example, with very dangerous effects on human health. Which should only be used under protection if you ask me. All the knowledge has existed since 2006 and the occurrence of diseases immediately after the gadolinium dose is one thing. The other is that of course long-term effects can occur up to 18 months later, and it's not just the so-called nephrogenic systemic fibrosis. So the generalized development of a connective tissue nephrosis, kidney disease. But there are also structural changes in the brain that result in neurological disorders. There are joint problems up to rigidity, up to mitochondriopathy. That means the energy metabolism at the cellular level is restricted, unclear blood clotting disorders, oppressive tingling pain all over the body, limbs, at the joints, in the chest, often also in the area sometimes during the MRI scan, but then maybe right there where the MRI scan was, again and again, this tingling in the head. Bone and muscle pain. Sometimes people can no longer bear clothes on their skin. Pain that is triggered when it is curled or even tight-fitting, scratchy clothing is no longer tolerated. We also observe, even after a long time, ENT sy symptoms such as dizziness or speech problems, difficulty swallowing, 
locally limited muscle contraction, but also reduced strength through muscular changes, visual disturbances, like slight double vision, blurred vision, but also skin changes such as itching, sudden, sudden eczema outbreak, preferably on the extremities or the trunk. I really don't want to continue the series. I just want to say, also hair loss, taste that has a metallic touch, dizziness, sudden calcification, so calcium deposits, maybe in the shoulder, trouble sleeping, digestive problems, some intolerance to heat, cold, all that is in the meantime. And the research is, of course, constantly, constantly large, a symptom picture, which has, of course, also been classified over the years. And you have to address the topic at a corresponding MRI examination in any case, because the colleague in question can only switch to another product if you ask them. Today, there are other substitutes for gadolinium with table salt with glucose. Among other things, there is a wide range for the doctor. But what one should perhaps absolutely do whenever possible, because very often these examinations are planned, if it doesn't have to be done in an emergency. But if these examinations are planned and will be planned, is always to weigh up the risk for such an examination at the beginning. And I think we are pretty quick today to get a computer-aided imaging to rule out the worst. This may also be important in the corresponding case, but sometimes that's where the diagnosis begins. And of course, as colleagues who are specialised, we always have something to clarify as part of the transfer and we're quick to rule something out, but shouldn't it be about understanding the symptoms first? And if it is absolutely necessary to have to and to do this examination, then of course it is very important that you are well prepared for it, especially with regard to liver and kidney detoxification and with a very good and also a well prepared organism before doing such an examination. The first phase in the liver, that's sometimes not the big problem, but the first phase of the liver must, of course, now bring the toxin that the liver has to break down into the second phase. Highly toxic intermediate products are often formed, and then the second phase has to get it through different processes and methylation and glucuronidation and sulfation and acetylation. So a toxin has to go through these biochemical processes then to be water soluble. That's the big point. And if it's not water soluble, it is temporarily stored. First of all, there is the large connective tissue, the entire extracellular space of the human being that is available there. At the beginning, I was able to explain to you that we also store this in the bones, in the organs. But we have to support precisely these phases. And I can simply tell you at this point, use zeolite. Zeolite as a rock mineral is very strong toxin binding preferably in powder form. Store it maybe three, four, five, 400 milligram sachets, dissolve it and drink it. As I said, try to store it well before the examination. Immediately after the examination. Or then also in the following days. Increase phase two with Alpha lipoic acid, for example. Please take high doses of vitamin C, zinc, 
30 to 45 milligrams staggered throughout the day. S. adenosylmethionine to activate better intracellular detoxification. All secondary plant substances, garlic, onions, can now accelerate the detoxification significantly through sulfation and drink, drink a lot. Especially after this examination. I can only recommend an alkaline bath in the evening. Raise the pH in the bath to 8.5. There are these alkaline baths. Do proper dry brushing and then please push the detoxification significantly. I already said 300 micrograms of sodium selenite. There really are a number of other thoughts. However, what is important to me is that you take things really seriously. That the risk profile is skimmed off beforehand. And we don't just get sick, we can also face life with an incredible tolerance. But sometimes it's because maybe in this situation right now, it was no longer compatible for the body to act. And we should have respect and admiration for what we do and don't just do it in any case, but be very aware how do we protect people. And please question that if such an examination is pending for you. And in that context, I hope I could give you, as parents, some recommendations. Finally, a word about in use for SIS. This is a plasma process in which we filter one and a half times the entire amount of blood extra corporally through an appropriate environmental filter. And of course, it's an incredibly elegant method, even after such contrast medium examinations to bind the gadolinium here and all sorts of other organophosphates, herbicides, pesticides, inflammatory immune complexes, toxic metals, mercury, lead. There are a lot of options now. But maybe I can end this with this one. Thank you very much for your attention today and I am really looking forward to the next week with you and the episode in our Visite series. Thank you. And goodbye.